Christmas is here, Home Alone is on TV and you're sick of it too. First I'll tell you why you hate this movie too, then I'm gonna watch Mojo this sh and give you 9 better Christmas movies to watch this holiday season. Ho ho ho. Home Alone is not a great movie, but before you call me the Grinch, I will say that I get it. I get why people like it. I liked it too as a kid. It's a good family friendly film people of all ages can enjoy and, I'll be honest, I don't mind watching it either. The thing about the first one is, in spite of the dumb thieves, ridiculous traps and overall corny story, there is some semblance of a movie beneath it all. There's a good character arc for Kevin, who's the runt of the family and he's scared of everything. The basement, his neighbor, his relatives, hot women. But by the end of the film he musters up the courage to defend his house, defeat the thieves, befriend the scary old guy and also help others out. There's a good inner journey for the other characters as well. His family appreciates him more now. His mother realizes how much she loves her little boy. Kevin himself learns this too. The old neighbor fixes his relationship with his son and everything wraps up with a good happy ending and a good lesson in the importance of family. And then they shit on all of this for Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Let's start with the positive. I like the overall idea of the film. It's a good idea for a sequel. Kevin gets separated from his family again for Christmas, but this time, he just boards the wrong plane instead of being left at home. But everything else is just wrong. From the fun, loving, family-friendly stuff from the first film, we get to the dark side of New York, and with ladies of the night, homeless people and taxi drivers straight out of horror films. Why do this? What's the point? And what's the point with that pigeon lady? The old guy in the first movie made sense. He was a neighbor who was scary just to a bunch of kids because they told urban legends about him. Then when Kevin actually talked to him, he realized that he's just a normal, lonely old man, which he actually helps to reconnect with his son and spend Christmas with his family too. But what is the point of the Irish woman again? Sure, the message that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover is there. But what else? Nothing happens at the end for her. She's still homeless and feeding pigeons and freezing cold. Kevin learned again not to judge a book by its cover, but there's no arc for her. Then there's the violence. The traps in the first film were childish. The thieves got hurt, but aside from a third-degree burn and some huge falls, it really did seem like they got punished, not killed. What Kevin does to these thieves in this sequel is basically attempted murder. Bricks to the head, actual explosions. What is the point of going all out on the violence? Just to top the first film, it's a bad sequel to a bad movie and we need something better. So... I got just the top 9 for you. Klaus The only animated film in this list, and also the only new one, Klaus is a 2019 film from Netflix with a fresh take on the Santa Claus story. Now honestly, the animation itself reminds me more of a in a nutshell YouTube video than an actual animated feature film, but other than that small nitpick, this film is a great watch during the holiday season, especially if you've made the mistake of procreating and actually have kids. But even if you're a loser like me and have no kids and no future, you can still enjoy this film on your own and pretend you're not actually crying at the end. Edward Scissorhands, a classic Tim Burton film, where Johnny Depp was emo before it was cool. Depp plays a robot with scissors instead of hands because his maker passed away before finishing him and now he's stuck as a human lawnmower. The film is from 1990 when Amber Heard was just four years old so the love interest is played by a young Winona Ryder who was also dating him in real life. This is before Winona's shoplifting episode by the way. Damn Johnny, you really know how to pick them, huh? I'm not sure if they needed makeup and wardrobe for this film or if this was just what Johnny Depp wore at the time in real life, but this is a classic film set during Christmas, and there's a famous scene where Edward makes it snow in Florida. It's the perfect film to watch this Christmas, and the perfect opportunity to pretend to be a Tim Burton fan to your relatives. Gremlins. Yes, really. Gremlins is a 1984 comedy horror film, where a guy gets a cute furry creature from Chinatown that comes with three very important instructions. No sunlight, Otherwise, the poor little bastard dies. No contact with water. Otherwise, it multiplies faster than the Kardashians. And the rule my wife also has for me, no eating after midnight. Otherwise, it turns into a hideous monster no one wants to f Of course, those rules get broken. Our little Furby multiplies, then turns into a bunch of ugly little critters that ruin the winter holidays for everyone. Perfect self-aware Christmas movie? Hell yes. Batman Returns. Time to pretend you know Tim Burton's work again, because another one of his films made it on the list. 
Batman Returns is the sequel to Tim's classic Batman film, starring the great Michael Keaton. These films are classics, in spite of the fact that some aspects haven't really aged all that well, like, say, the acting. Batman Returns starts with Christmas being ruined in Gotham, but don't worry, Batman is on the case and will catch that chubby little Grinch by the time the film ends. The film also stars Danny DeVito, Christopher Walken and Michelle Pfeiffer and say what you will about the weird sets, but this film is 100% more realistic than Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Lethal Weapon One of my favorite films growing up and the ultimate buddy cop film. Many people forget the fact that this is also a Christmas film, but it is. It's just set in Los Angeles, so there's no snow unless you're talking nose beers, but the Christmas spirit is there. They drive a cop car through Murtaugh's living room, hitting his Christmas tree. The bad guys at the beginning of the film disguise their illegal operation as a Christmas tree shop. It's the perfect holiday film, fun for everyone. This film's so old, Mel Gibson still had a bit of an Australian accent here and there. Watch him struggle to pronounce French fry the American way. I don't worry, here, have a French fry. Classic action film and a great Christmas film, I guess. Bad Santa. Finally, another film on this list with an actual Santa Claus, sort of. Bad Santa is a 20-year-old movie starring Billy Bob Thornton as a safe-cracking big-time alcoholic who looks for work as Santa Claus alongside his little friend. This was right after Billy Bob dated Angelina Jolie in her prime, so f*** him. Anyway, the Santa job is a front. Once the store closes, they actually break in, steal everything, then wait for next year to do it all over again after they run out of money. Then, Billy Bob's character runs into a chubby kid who changes his life. He had fat acceptance in his life before it was trendy. The idea itself seems inspired by the race, that great Seinfeld episode, but other than that, the story itself is an original Christmas story that s*** all over Home Alone films. In Bruges our number three spot belongs to In Bruges, a dark British comedy in which two Irish hitmen hide in Bruges, Belgium, after they messed up their last job. The film was supposed to have two English lead characters, but after Irish actors Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson got cast, the characters became Irish too. I don't want to spoil the movie since it's a bit less known than the rest on this list, so if you want a different Christmas movie to watch at home, this is the gem for you. And yes, Bruges is nicer, cleaner, cheaper, and safer for tourists than New York City is, so f*** Kevin. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang Shane Black is a legend. He's written Lethal Weapon, The Last Boy Scout, Last Action Hero, and my favorite comedy of all time, The Nice Guys, which he also directed. He was the chubby guy in Predator, and he also directed Iron Man 3, but I'm not gonna hold that against him. Well, he also wrote and directed this 2005 film that also takes place during Christmas time. But just like with Lethal Weapon, it's L.A. so you can't really tell. Starring Robert Downey Jr. a few years before his big comeback, this is another funny film from Shane who should stick to dark, witty comedies and should stay away from comic book franchises. Ugh. Die Hard. And now, the moment you have all been waiting for. Our pick for number one. It shouldn't be a surprise considering the other choices on this list, like Lethal Weapon, but yes, this is a Christmas film, and yes, it is the perfect Christmas film. So what makes Die Hard great? In a future video, we might do a deep dive on why this movie is basically perfect, but until then, let's just talk about the basics. John McClane is a no bull cop from New York City, who comes to LA to visit his estranged wife, Holy, cause she moved here for a job offer. They seem happy to see each other at first, but they quickly get into an argument, and just as he's about to hit her, she has to go out and give a speech, and that's when Hans Gruber comes in and f**ks their shit up. You know the plot? They take over the building, but John manages to hide and pick them off one by one. The movie has some of my favorite one-liners of all time. Come on to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. Welcome to the party, pal! And I genuinely watch this every Christmas. See you next time.